If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy do we have a project for you. In this episode, we're going to get a little wet as we attack the gully in the logging camp, starting right now. Welcome to It's My Railroad, the how-to show for regular people. Hey, this is a show about regular people building their model railroads. Uh, it features me and I show you my tips, my techniques, and all the stuff that went sideways and everything else. Uh, it's really a lot of fun. We're really digging, hanging out with the model railroad community, and we're learning a ton. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, and then don't forget to push that little bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. All right, just before we get into today's episode, a little bit of housekeeping. As many of you already know, YouTube Model Builders has asked It's My Railroad to appear on their live broadcast of Who's Big Bill Talking To Now. Uh, that's happening on August 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I have to tell you, we're pretty excited about being on this show. First of all, these are regular guy model railroaders just like you and me. Second of all, they've had some hitters on that show. Kathy Millett has been on that show. Ron Marsh recently celebrating 10,000 subscribers at Ron's Trains and Things has been on that show. Some editors from Model Railroading Magazines. It's going to be a really great time. We're excited to be a part of it. So make sure you set your clocks for uh, August 14th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and we're going to see you there. And now announcement number two. So if you watched our last episode of Sidetrack, you know we announced that we're going to be starting a third Model Railroad show. That's right, because I don't have enough to do around here. Um, it's called Track Smack, mostly because I like the way it sounds. And uh, second of all, we're going to be smacking our gums about Model Railroading. And the format's going to be, well, the topic we talk about for a while, and then open it up to some chat. Um, interaction and throughout the week if you guys want to messenger me on Facebook at it's my railroad uh, topic ideas we'll just talk about it so listen uh, Saturday mornings 7 a.m. California time live broadcast if you've got nothing else to do why don't you grab a cup of coffee come hang out with me and let's talk about model railroading all right rail fans let's get into this what are we doing today today we're gonna work on that gorge that sits between the left and right sides of that logging camp. Now, uh, for the last 10 weeks, I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do there. Uh, I've discussed it with a couple of uh, our subscribers here and there, what should happen. And what you're about to see is what I decided to do because that's my railroad and that's how I roll. Anyway, I could continue to talk to you about it, but that's not gonna get us anywhere, right? So why don't we just go into the hobby room right now? Hey, welcome back to the hobby room to the Brown Smith Railroad and our logging camp project in progress. Pretty excited today because today we are going to address that gully that sits between the operational side of the logging camp and the logging camp proper. It's that piece that divides those two scenes, almost makes two scenes out of it, even though it's one scene. Um, now here's the challenge. When I put that in, I really didn't think about how we were, what we were going to do with it. I just put the two hillsides together, made some kind of a notch in it, and because what I was ultimately trying to get was a place for that log bridge to go over way in the front of the scene. So, you know, I've been kicking around ideas for like the last 10 weeks on what to do back there. I've come up with a, a waterfall idea, but <clears throat> that seems a little dramatic. Uh, maybe just putting some shrubbery back in there, but you know, I've, I've settled on something that I'm going to attempt to do. And uh, again, I'm going to break new ground for me. This is something I've not really attempted to do before. I've only done one scene actually with any kind of water and it's the uh, the gorge over there. And that was pretty easy. It was pretty big. And um, yeah, it, it wasn't as difficult as I think this might be. So instead of me just continuing to babble about what we're going to do, why don't I just take you over here and uh, show you what I'm going to do. And I think we'll just start back here at the sort of quote unquote waterfall area. Um, you see back up in here, I, I did kind of leave it where I'm hoping to hide some kind of a trickle, something coming from around this corner right here. Um, I think I got some rocks I can put up in here to kind of hide that. And, you know, from a regular person's point of view, it might just look like there's water trickling down through there. Now, there's some things that happened uh, without me uh, trying to do it uh, by themselves. And that is kind of right in here, we got these depressions that either with paint or with rocks glued in there, 
I can sort of make it look like there's little rocks coming down. And then you guys have seen, uh, I'm sure, when water's kind of trickling down some rocks on the side of a hill, it gets a little mossy in there or something. So we'll come up with something, maybe like this, this green stuff we have right here that will sparse through there to make it look a little mossy. And then further down, we kind of have this, this channel uh, right here. And the, the thing about that channel is this is actually higher than this uh, over here. It's just the way it turned out. And so what I think I'll do to try to pretend that's not the case is I'll put a little bit of extra rock kind of through here and then maybe build up some ground cover back there. Maybe no one will notice by the time we get stuff over here, get stuff over here that uh, it's a little higher than it's supposed to be. Uh, as long as the water makes it down through there and gets under the bridge, then uh, I think we're golden. Not only that, uh, starting back in here somewhere, I'd like to see what I can do to get some kind of reeds or something. It's a little bit taller kind of grass growing up out of here. And then, you know, actually we'll buy some N-scale mosquitoes in. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, we won't. Anyway, we'll get the water going down through here. It's kind of a low spot here, like a little pond. Um, I'm hoping that'll look pretty good. But then, you know, as, as we get down here, this is the feature that I was, all this is, is based on this feature right here with this log bridge we got going over this sort of goal. And you can see there's barely enough room to get my stick underneath there. So we can't have a whole lot of water. It's gotta be a little trickle, or we gotta mimic it being just a little trickle. And what I'll, I think I'm gonna try to do is, is starting back here a little bit, and then through here have a whole lot of sort of um, rocks like the one you saw in the other gully from the last episode. All through here, some bigger rocks strewn here. Um, fix that hole right there, I don't know what that's about. Ugh, must be some average dude put that in there. Anyway, um, and get all those rocks in there. Again, get some kind of reading, kind of shoots up there. Some other brush, I don't know. Anyway, those are my ideas, and I think this is just how we're gonna proceed. So, uh, I know I need a lot of little rocks, and I have a way to get them, and I'm just gonna show you a technique that I'm using with the dirt that I picked up. Uh, I have this paper plate here to catch uh, what I'm about to drop down there. Uh, second of all, I borrowed this from the wife out of her kitchen about a year and a half ago. <laughs> Sucker! And uh, I use it to sift stuff. I don't even think she knows I still have it or not. I hope she doesn't watch this video because um, I'll get in so much trouble. Uh, second of all, then what I do is I just take some of that dirt I got from a job site and I dump it in there like this, just a bunch of it, and then just start shaking it around to... Uh, what happens is the dust is is uh, leaving there, right? See those, those rocks starting to materialize? I mean, this is not rocket science, uh, really, people. I mean, I, I bet almost all of you watching this have done something like this before, but, you know, the way we work around here, we just show you everything. And see, look at that. But see, what I'm digging about this dirt that I stole from a job site is uh, those rocks are kind of... They kind of look like rocks that would be in a river or a stream. Now that was completely by accident. I didn't even know I was gonna get that uh, until I did it over on the other side. So what I'm doing here is I'm, you can't see it because it's off camera. I'm getting some white glue on a toothpick and I'm gonna start by putting some glue back here. Now here, here's the way I do it. Again, subject to somebody who knows what they're doing, teaching you a different way. I'm really globbing up the glue back there a lot because I actually, off camera found a rock that fits right in there but it needs to be stuck down so if I put this right onto that glue with enough globular glue look at that kind of holds that rock in place doesn't it now what I need is kind of need another one behind it All right, let's see what else we got in the arsenal here I've, I've got this this other rock it's getting cramped in there. See if I just lay that in, lay that in there. What do you guys think? Is that going to work? Ish. And then maybe put a smaller one right there. Oh, look at that. That just fell down like that. That's, that's amazing. That's, oh dude, uh, that's what I want. I want that right there. Well, there you go. Look at that. Uh, three rocks back there that will at least sort of camouflage uh, where the water's coming from, so we don't have to go crazy with it. Let me just give you a kind of an idea of what I'm, I'm looking at back here. Okay, um, again, pardon the hand, but I drop all these rocks in there. I 
of let them fall naturally where they want. Well, that actually looks pretty symmetrical. Not thrilled with it. You know, maybe something like that. Kind of looks like there's, uh, and the water will be trickling out down and around and through those, possibly. As a matter of fact, I think the alcohol glue solution I'm getting ready to put in there will hold all those in place, and uh, we don't even have to trip on doing that now. Well, I just went ahead and dumped it all in there. I don't know. Uh, I was having a hard time getting it to look the way I want. I think what I'll do now is I'll brush some of this around. I wonder what would happen if I put some glue like here, here, and here, and then stuck some of these uh, green shrubs that I have uh, up in there. Because I really don't want to use static grass. I'm not real thrilled with the static grass in this uh, particular application. Okay, now we'll get the uh, Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Green Grass and see what happens if we just rain it down on there. Okay, it'll get darker as... Well, okay, that's maybe too much. It's going to get darker as we put the, uh, you know, the glue treatments on there. And I think the alcohol is going to wash away what didn't stick to the glue anyway. Okay, so we kind of have this, this creakish thing happening right now. Here's a technique that, uh, oh heck, you may or may not have ever seen before. Uh, but I've done it before. So I have these fibers that... Uh, Quite honestly, I don't know where I got them. I've got sort of the the yellowish kind of ones and I get the greenish kind of ones. And what I kind of like to do is put a little dab of glue down there, then hold some of these fibers with my fingers, snip it with scissors, and then stab them down into that glue because they're kind of random heights and it kind of makes this reedish kind of thing. So I think like kind of in here sporadically, definitely uh, back here, I want to add some of that. So we're going to go through and do that right now. So I really think this sort of low-lying area here is a little higher than anything else. I think that could use some sort of reedish treatment, maybe down in this little spot, like right here. A uh, couple others. I, I'm just going to randomly place this. I, You know, nature's random, uh, although nature believes it's not random. Uh, nature's random. I wouldn't listen to it if I were you. So I'm going to just add some... Um, some of my glue right now and see if I can get those reeds going. Okay, a couple of quick things. Um, these uh, reeds here are like three times as tall as a human being. So when this stuff dries, I've got this technique where I can go through and sort of snip that down. I don't know. It looks cool the way it is, but eh, we'll see how that goes. Um, second of all, I just added some ground fall around in here to sort of blend it in with the surrounding territory. Of course, we're not done over in this area yet or, or back over in here. We're just getting this kind of done. So anyway, what I'm hoping is going to happen right now is I'm going to take the alcohol on my pipette and start drizzling it down on all this and hopefully it'll clean off these rocks a little bit and start moving all this stuff in such a direction that it looks like water could have or is flowing through there. Now keep in mind, none of those rocks are glued down yet. Uh, this treatment I'm giving right now, this is the only way they're going to get glued down. So we just wash these off a little bit and get all that glue on there and I'm going to go, or all that alcohol on there, I'm going to go put glue on there in a little bit here. Alright, with the glue all in place, I mixed up a new batch of 50% glue 
ish, 50% <laughs> water, and a couple of drops of uh, dishwashing detergent. And uh, it smells really good. I'm using Dawn. It's got a scent to it. Um, I hope that doesn't screw anything up. But get my pipette with the glue. Get back here and just drop it on these rocks. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry overnight. Now, I'll tell you the truth, wet, it looks pretty good from the regular guy point of view. Uh, once it is dry, we're going to have to do a little shaping of some of those uh, reeds like I was saying. Um, make sure we like the way things look and then we're going to just, just gently try to pour some water in there and hope the overall scene when we're done looks good. So let's let this dry and let's come back and put some water on it. Okay, so it's the following morning and... Things seem to have dried up. Hey, before we put that water on though, uh, like I was saying, I want to come and trim down some of these reeds we have here. A uh, human being would probably stand about that tall right now. And you know, I don't really think there's a problem with them being a little taller than that. Um, but this is like skyscraper height. So there's there's two of them that I want to try to do this to. Now, uh, with the camera position and me being right-handed, uh, this might be a little awkward to show you, but um, we're gonna give it a shot. So what I do is I kind of get the scissors at an angle and just start randomly cutting in and just start shaping it because I don't want them to necessarily all be the the stalks to all be the same height and by cutting at an angle it kind of randomizes that a little bit. Well, um, I think I'll play the It's My Railroad card and just say, I like the way that looks right there. All right, so now we got all this stuff down in the gully to make it look like a creek. Maybe we should call it a creek. I don't know. Anyway, we want to get some water in there, but not like a raging rapids. That's not what I envisioned for this deal. Just something like a little trickle of a creek going through there. So to do that, we're going to use Realistic Water by Woodland Scenics. This stuff is already mixed. You pour it on there and you've got water. You need to make sure and follow the instructions on it though because if you pour it too thick you're gonna have problems. Trust me on this. This is the same stuff I used on the gorge uh, back over here and I had some great results by the time it was done. So uh, we're gonna use it now to put some water on this little gully slash creek we've got going on back there now. We're gonna use a pipette to take it and apply it. The thing about a pipette, if you've used them, they'll get little air pockets in there. You go to squirt it out it's going to have air pockets in there. That is not good when you're pouring in water. So what we're going to do is we're going to very gently be dropping uh, this stuff down in there. And then when we see air pockets develop, we're going to go through and suck the air pockets out. Anyway, uh, that's my idea for how we're going to do this. I think right now we should just take some of this. We're going to take the cap off of it. And then we're going to take our pipette. We're going to stick it in there and we're going to get going. And we're back in the studio. That's how it gets done, baby. Uh, 10 weeks ago, no idea how we're gonna pull this off. Talked to some subscribers, hung out about it a little bit, and then boom, I flew by the seat of my pants and got her done. I really think you're gonna like the way this looks. 
and I'm gonna show it to you next week as we finish the logging camp. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, so anyway, hey, this is the kind of stuff we do here. It's sidetrack, it's my railroad, and now track, smack. So if uh, you're new here, just go ahead and subscribe, and then make sure you like and share this video with somebody. Don't forget to connect with us over at Facebook and leave your comments about topics for track, smack. And uh, we'll see you there, all right? So anyway, I guess that'll do it for now. Thanks again for joining me. My name is Steve Brown, and rail on, my friends.